This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got two guests with me from the Smith Falls Horticultural Society. Deborah Bell Bellevue, you are the vice president. Yes, I am. And I've got Steve Schwarzkopf. You are in charge of the Food Bank Garden. Food Bank Garden. And that's yes. what we're going to talk about right now, too, because Prefer we're, we're, we're yeah. talking, you know, spring is coming. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. so we've got to get this started yeah. again. But you've been doing the Food Bank Garden for a few years now. I've been doing it. This will be our third year. Okay. It started out, there was a lady running it. She got very sick one year and she was in the hospital. So it was called the Carrot Garden at that time. And I don't know if they grew carrots or not, but it ended up, it ended up that I was involved a little bit and I did more and more and next thing you know I was doing more. So. Well who to call? Better to call than somebody from the Horticultural Society. <laughs> <laughs> there you that's go. right. So anyway that's how we got, got it all started and the, the food bank garden there is, is uh, 25 feet deep and 50 feet wide. We had 30 tomato plants in there last year and that was a big, de big thing I think because it's easy to make a tomato sandwich you know, it's not a hard thing to do, and and uh, we had cucumbers and peppers and and uh, zucchini and and uh, squash. We had uh, twenty pepper plants, and I tried planting beans this year, and the beans did not work out very well. I think the best uh, food that I fed was rabbits. Also. <laughs> All you made some friends, eh? You made some <laughs> there friends. There you go, new friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are surprised when we talk about the food bank that it's just not canned, go canned goods and, and pasta, that type of thing. They take fresh produce and they appreciate this so much. And anybody that has extra in their gardens, they'd gladly take it over to food bank and they'd gladly distribute it amongst people that need it. Right, that's right, that's right. So you must be thinking of this year coming too, getting things started? Yep, yep, we've got a plan going already. Uh, matter of fact, Philip is doing some of that planning for me now. He's going to drop which way. We're going to change the direction because of the wind blowing down through the plants. So we had it crossways last year, going up and down. This year we're going to plant it lengthwise so the wind will carry through because it's mostly a west wind comes through there so okay and we're yeah. talking at the whole the heritage house museum yes behind the yes heritage house museum. so that's where everything is grown and yeah that, that and the apple trees hopefully we'll get apples we had quite a few apples this year i uh picked up a lot off the ground and uh i'd like to i'd like to try to get something going where uh, some of the tomatoes that are rotten you can still use them because there's still good parts to it and I'm in, I like to cook too, so uh, I made a special Hungarian dish actually. It's uh, cooked down peppers and onions and, and tomatoes. And uh, you can freeze that in little bags. And then in the, in the winter, I take a bag out, put a little uh, kielbasa in the, cut up kielbasa in a dish in the fry pan, add this thing to it. And then when it's all cooked and nice and hot, I add four dozen, four scrambled eggs to it. Oh, well, there you go. You, you guys aren't just about growing plants, you're about <laughs> recipes and everything, too, there how to cook go. this stuff. There That's great. Go. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So in terms of your garden, too, you, you depend on volunteers? To help I depend on volunteers, yes. I have uh, eight throughout the summer, two weeks at a time. So you take over two weeks of watering the garden and picking the produce and taking it to the food bank. And if it rains, you don't have to go very often. So, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's uh, yeah. And you hope for rain too, right? Yeah. Like, where do you get the water? Is it, there's a hose there, there's or is a, it? They, the town, the town of Smith Falls actually lent me a rotor tiller last year, and we rotor tilled the garden, and I fertilized it. Uh, there's a few companies. Well, one company is. Uh, donated all the landscaping cloths, so there's no weeding and nothing in the garden. So it's all just the landscaping cloth and the plants are planted in it and uh, we go from there and you water for two weeks and then somebody else takes over and I have a I have a, a moisture checker so if it's moisture is there don't water right Right, yeah. right, right. All sorts of stuff. And the water stuff. itself to answer your question Kathy is attached right to the Heritage House okay. Museum and so you can turn it off at the top that's right next to the garden uh, and then it's ready. Plus it gets shared with other people who are doing their own community garden, 
next to ours. Right, 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 right. Now, we had members of the, the Horticultural Society here a couple of weeks ago just yes. to get drumming up uh, the beginning of a new year and uh, getting out of COVID, too. So uh, your, your meetings are monthly, yes. if I remember correctly. Third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. at the Legion in Smith's Falls. That's right, that's right. So uh, that's all started again, and you are the vice president. Were you just elected as vice president? Yeah. Yes. So okay. incoming for this coming November. All so right. Laura Hunter is our current president, and she's been in the role for a couple of years, so she's doing a great job. And she was the one who was here two weeks ago along with Madeline Archer. Right, right, right. Now talk about your meetings a little bit. You've got different subjects going on all the time. and uh... Yeah, we've got a speaker coming in this month who's going to talk about edible trees and shrubs, which I guess to Steve's point about apple trees, um, there are different varieties that people can grow on their own land and then use that to, to make recipes and, and eat at their table. So that's, that's coming up in March. I, I know people, uh, and I just thought of this, I know people have tried, it, it's usually a tropical type thing too, but people have tried, you know, orange trees, pear trees, that sort of thing. Any advice for them? Go to no. Florida? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the best idea. Go yeah. to Florida. Yeah, yeah that's right. certain, our zone um, may not allow for year-round fruit trees, oh. like oranges for sure. They need the but, warmth all year. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there are lots of options, so. Oh, yeah, there's um, just so much that we can do here. And, and if you're interested to come to the meeting, you'll find out a lot more on in the March meeting, I think. Okay, and that's edible. when you have a special guest speaker yes, this month. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. And I mean, you've got a great uh, Facebook page too. I mean, I, you go on there and you learn all sorts of different things of, of uh, I, actually I, I went on it, I think last night, and it was things you can regrow from scraps. And it was green onions, sweet potatoes, romaine lettuce, garlic, basil, potatoes, celery, ginger, from scraps. You can right. start a garden all again. Yeah. 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 And, and the great. Facebook page started out years ago. Uh, Susan Pate was very involved in setting it up so that um, there was an automatic post done on a regular basis, like every couple of days. And now Bonita Lucas, who belongs to the yes. Smith Falls Legion, uh, she has been active at posting a lot of articles that are coming from all over our society, especially Anita Friggin gives her some some information to post and our readership has raised thousands of oh. percent uh, because of the amount of posts that are being added to the food uh, the uh, facebook page and like the food bank garden and any information about the upcoming meeting whatever we want to say this is the way to get the word out and through your channel as well is is certainly a great way well you know yesterday i was at work and we're, we're talking and uh, a girl i work with said her tomatoes didn't work very well yet last year i said well you know what i've got some people coming in today i can ask them <laughs> now she said she heard she should crack up eggshells and put them in because there's calcium in them eggshells will keep away uh worms oh. basically it'll it'll uh the night crawlers will will not be as active with eggshells because it hurts walking on them, I guess. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so it's not the calcium part of it. It's well, it's a calcium too. It is calcium okay. too. I had a friend that that uh, actually took uh, calcium tablets and put them by his tomatoes. Okay. Because it helped. You actually bought calcium tablets and put them in. And that works too. Stuck them in the ground. Now, before we we started taping, we started talking about a different. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna say it, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Yes. Um, we were talking about uh, keeping rabbits away from your garden. <laughs> well, there's. I just went on. I actually went on uh, University of YouTube and checked out checked out what would keep away rabbits. And there is some products you can buy on Amazon, but that's a whole nother story. I p sprayed coyote urine down both sides of the, in the rows down both sides of the plants and it did work for a while because the plants started to just come up out of the ground nicely and there were rains a few days and watering the people watered next thing you know the urine this the smell is gone so and it doesn't so help them grow it keeps the animals away it just keeps the animals <laughs> away i'm thinking of planting it around the edge of the of the garden or okay. spraying it around the edge of the garden Last year, I had donations from uh, Smith Falls Iron, 
and metal. Yes. And uh, they donated some steel posts to help with the fencing around the garden. Right. And uh, Pivy, they gave us some... Uh, Pivy Mart? Oh, yes. Okay. Pivy yeah. Mart. Mm -hmm. They gave us some uh, fertilizer and bone uh, blood meal. Okay. Which is when you're planting, you put in a little blood meal, a teaspoonful, and it really helps help start the garden going yeah it's nice when you get the support of the community they yeah. know how important this yeah. is yeah and kathy this to your point about the questions that you're getting from friends it's a topic that as soon as you talk about you know you belong to the horticultural society a question comes out about what can i do about my peonies what can i do about my tomatoes and so always you can post the question on the facebook site and if we don't have the answer we'll go to the ontario or the canadian um horticultural group and get answers for you and, or come to a meeting and there's always someone in the room who has knowledge like Steve. That's definitely, <laughs> definitely with you. That was something I was going to bring up at the end of the meetings we should have, we should actually have a question and answer period. Just general, yeah. General questions. There's always if a few minutes. Got, yeah, there's always a few minutes that somebody could ask a question and we could, we know there's lots of experts there. And we do have access to master gardeners. Each society has at least one. And often what we'll do is bring those master gardeners to our meeting and they'll sit like a panel. And so you might have a question about a certain tree in your yard and mm -hmm. at least one of those individuals would either have the answer or get the answer for you. Okay. So it's all about education. Absolutely. That, was a, that was a good meeting, that one. Yes, it that was. That was a good meeting. We had them three, four, five. Four, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they were very knowledgeable when you wanted anything answered. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, before we get to the end of this interview, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, my wife wrote a little note in the, in the, oh, what happened to my book? Right there. Oh. My wife wrote a little note in this uh, Smith Falls Horticulture Society yearbook, and it was quite, quite good, I thought, about, uh, well, I didn't think, I know. <laughs> My wife wrote it. <laughs> and the yearbook is available when you pay your $10 fee, that is included. And your $10 fee is the whole year. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Right. Yeah. Have you ever considered what it would be like to feed a family and there's nothing to prepare? Well, the Horticulture Society had taken the inf t initiative to attack that problem. Over the past three summers, with volunteers and garden space behind the Heritage House Museum, a plan was put in place. So that's, that's kind of a neat way to say it, what Absolutely. we're doing, and yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. then one more final thought is um, around the volunteers. Steve does an excellent job at organizing the calendar for the whole summer, and, if, and I was one of the volunteers. And then my role would be water for two weeks, uh, weed if necessary, but not really, right, Steve? No, and then harvest and take it to the food bank. And then I would kind of pass that torch to the next volunteer who would come to the Heritage House Museum, sit at the picnic table, and I would tell them kind of my two weeks story, and then they, they would take over for the following two weeks. But oftentimes, the most challenging part of every organization is how do you get volunteers right. to step up and be involved? A, because they think it might be too much, or B, they just don't really know a lot about the horticultural side of, of our lives, and so they might not step up, but really, we will train you, we will show you, Steve is excellent at explaining. And um, the students, if they have time in the summer, don't know if they know this, but I'm sure they do, it counts toward their community hours. Excellent. So if I'm putting in in two weeks, you know, 10 or 20 hours, or 15 or even five, depending mm -hmm. on the rain and so on, those, do those hours go directly to their community hours. So we're asking, Kathy, if you know of anyone or you can spread the word, Steve would really appreciate the help, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. And I was going to say that because I, I really would like to see more students involved. Now, how do the people and, get a hold of you then? Well, I could give him my phone number okay. if you want. <laughs> so it's 613-283-2673. Uh, it's Steve. Just give me a holler if you want to help. It's, and, and I'd gladly offer to help. Students especially. I'd like to see them get more involved in learning how to grow and how to pick or whatever right. happens, you know, because you could you could learn a lot even with the apple trees. Now that that's something that a lot of people. When I first started, I mean, I lived in Hamilton before, and when I first, I had an apple tree in the yard, and I trimmed it right back, 
and I darn near killed it. It's like, <laughs> it wasn't pretty when I was done. Sometimes you learn by doing, don't <laughs> yes, you? Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. along the way. That's, that's right. Sure. That's yeah, right. So. Well, I thank you very much for coming here today. I, and I know I've got to have you come back because there's so much to learn about our Smith Falls Horticultural Society. Deborah Bell Bellevue and I've got Steve Schwarzkopf. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, thank Kathy. You.